Hey, y'all, it's Chris with Off the Road Again podcast. I just want to give you a heads up on this episode. We recorded on what basically was like the plains of Mars. And so there was a bit of wind noise. And so every now and then it kind of like pixelates the audio, uh, makes us sound like robots for a little bit. And normally I only lasts for like maybe like two to five seconds and then comes right back up and is ready to go. Um, I really had a blast talking with these guys and getting to know these guys. It's It's always... It's always a little interesting when you go wheeling with people you don't really know that well. And while we talked to Nick Savachi a couple of years ago for about an hour, I got to know these guys really well over a series of uh, four to five days here um, and and kind of just going through some stuff uh, out in Moab. And it was an absolute blast. I hope you enjoy this episode and we will talk again soon. Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Mike. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Uh, tonight, it's a little different. Uh, normally, Ross is involved. Normally, we're in different locations. We're all in the same location tonight. We're going to roll through six people. Uh, I, I think five or six. Something like five Yeah, six. six. Yeah, something like We'll, we'll get to everybody. <laughs> um, we've been on the Rogue Overland Expedition. Is that that's what that's it? Yeah, oh, Rogue Overland yeah. Expedition, one I, a year. I didn't see enough hashtags. Yeah, like everyone's got hashtags on the back of the truck, but none of them are Rogue Overland. <laughs> Light bars before lockers. Uh, you're 16, not 35. 16, not 35 16, is the not one. 35. There's a story behind that, and you. I got that story. Oh, from it. Okay. oh yeah, that was, was good. That was really good. Okay. <laughs> stories for Dave. Um, so do you want to introduce yourself real fast because we're just gonna talk about you the whole time? Yeah, for sure. My name is uh Mike Schaefer. Um, I've been hanging out with the road guys for a while now. Um, we actually met in Vegas. Um, actually, that's a funny story too. I got that story. Yeah, last that's night. Stories everywhere. Um, my wife, I got th- a wife, Andrea, yeah. and uh, three kids, and and we were coming home from my my parents' house one day, and um, it was summertime, Vegas hot, you know, and we're like, uh, Rogue was doing an ice cream social, <laughs> okay, at some random shopping center on the way home, and uh, I told Andrea, I'm like, hey, what? Let's swing by. I mean, frick, there'll be trucks out there. Let's we'll check out some cool trucks. Get the kids some ice cream. We'll go home. Right. Um, ended up meeting Nick and uh, found out he's got three kids almost the same age as ours. <laughs> and um, honestly, man, I, I feel like we just kind of hit it off. Like, uh, and we've been hanging out. I went to a couple. He does he, he does a lot of kids trips, he calls them, you know. Yeah. And they're just kind of low-key laid back because they're kids trips. You yeah. know, we're moving at the pace of children. So oh, I've already had one kid tell me he's coming next year. Oh, yeah, he absolutely. Saw photos absolutely. Of I'm like, all right, slow down, buddy. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, we ended up meeting them guys and went on a couple trips. And honestly, we just kind of hit it off. I, I Nick and I are very similar wheeling styles, you know. So and we both like to rock crawl. So we just, in that way, like we work good together. Like we, we spot each other. Well, I, well, he spots me. Well, I don't think he trusts me all the time. He always gives me this death look sometimes where I'm like, Nick, you're fine. You're going to be okay. And he's like, are you sure? Cause this doesn't feel good. I'm like, trust me. Based on the line you took today, where every, where yeah, at one point he threw his hands up and we're like, you're fine. Figure yeah. it out. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see why he's like, I don't really trust Mike all the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, you know, so I just, it just kind of worked. Our kids get along pretty good. Our wives get along pretty good. And, it, and um, yeah, so I mean, anyway, that's the, the, the kind of the short version of how we met them. And then we just, I've started helping them out with these trips four or five that was, that was that's my next question. How many of these trips? Have oh you been my on? gosh, dude! I um, I have four, five, six. I can't even. Honestly Do they start to blend? blend? Like <laughs> they don't blend. No. Okay. What happens is we get around here on these trips and start sitting around a fire and then start telling stories yeah. from those trips. Huh? And then you're like, oh, I remember that one now because all these like stories start coming out and there, stuff. There were so, a lot of locations that were dropped last night. There's for, a, yeah, for interesting we, interactions. We have been all over the place and, and like even be, beyond these trips. Nick and I and our families, because we we've ended up doing a lot. We we do a lot of summer trips and stuff together, just okay. kind of our two families. So you start throwing all those trips into it, like you know, <laughs> it's like, well, we were in Colorado. Was that our trip or was that the road trip? I can't remember now. And it's like, well, it's the one where you blew your wheel bearing. I'm like, okay, I remember that one. Okay, yeah, that yeah. one. It gets your, it, yeah, yeah. You start failures help you. <laughs> it's in details. You kind of you know put these things together. With, so, so what? How long have you been into off roading? Oh man, I. Uh, 20, I'm going to say 20 years, probably around that time. About the time I was in, probably the end of high school, I ended up with, um, I wanted a forerunner, couldn't afford a forerunner, ended up with an S10 Blazer. Okay. And didn't know really crap. We, we I mean, that's a sweet one. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, it was, it was a, a crazy. It was fresh. a 91 S10 Blazer, and I didn't know anything, man. So, like, my whole started, me willing started with 
cranked up torsion bars, <laughs> short pro comp Adelie leaps about that long or stiff. And we would drive around on these crappy dirt roads at like 40 pounds of air because air down, like who'd ever thought to do that, you right. know? And that's how I started. And um, so, I mean, that's been 20 years ago. And then I, through that, I've met so many amazing people. I, I tell people all the time, mo- all my best friends, I've met leaning over a hood of a truck on the side of a trail. So I have friends like that. Literally, home, like, I mean, all my three, I was just talking to Nick today in the truck. I think all my 3 a.m. friends I've met, you know, yeah. freaking just the way I met Sean, you know, he's one of my best friends. The way I met him was hilarious. You know, like it's a story in itself, you know, he told me that story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a great story. And too. I'm going to have him tell in a little bit. Yeah, please do. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's phenomenal. I'm going to have him tell the rebel story too, just cause That's a great story. That, too. that cracked me That's up. A great story. How long do we have on this? We, we can go. <laughs> The glory of the internet, like it's it, yeah. it'll load on the machine. That's so. what I said, man. My three AM friends, and that 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 he can tell you that story, but that was a three AM, that was a three AM story too, man. I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, I need parts from Vegas, man. So help, <laughs> help. And he's like, I'll put my pants on. You know, that's always the same between us. Is like, I'll put my pants on. You know, at, that, at least it's not. I'll put them back on. Like, yeah, I'll put my... yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you driving on this trip? I'm Which is dri- great. <laughs> I am driving my wife's fourth gen forerunner. No. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And I, I told Andrew, I actually told Andrew, I'm like, there's a guy who's more stock than me here. Like, you know, you know. Um, yeah, it's her fourth gen forerunner. It's literally the one she drives the kids back and forth to school in. So and in fact, like it's 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 kind of sad. I've got four cars at home right now, and we had to borrow a car from my in-laws so she could run so the kids back and forth to school you're, because you're she's not driving my eighty-five. There's not enough room. I've got a sixty-two Willys. It's it's a it's freaking awesome truck, but she's not driving it back and right. forth. And uh, so yeah, my truck, my normal truck is broke, so I borrowed her her fourth gen. Yeah, it, it's been. I I've honestly. It's probably that truck's got two hundred and thirty nine thousand miles on it, and this is the most it's ever been in four wheel drive. Really, I built that truck. We, yeah, I built that truck basically so we could run, uh, drive long distances. Okay, still live out of it like we're overlanding, you know. Yeah. But I wanted to be able to take it down forest service roads. If we got into some mile wheel, and I could lock the transfer case yeah. up. It's open open diffs, you know. And I put sliders on it, you know, for that. But it's, I mean, super mild lift, super. Dude, he didn't even seem to mild. notice anything. It was it's, cool. It's, it's so good. And I and I told Aaron, I'm like, man, this this thing's kind of rocking. And I've kind of had fun. My, excuse me, my other truck is, I put a lot of work into it. That truck is is actually a build over the course of probably 15 years. Okay. Um, two different trucks that kind of turned into that, that one. So my my normal off road truck is little black Toyota. It's a 2000 Toyota 4Runner. Okay. But it's dual transfer cases, 35 inch tires, lock front and rear. Dual transfers. Dual transfer okay. cases. My crawl ratio is right a hair under 180 to 1. Wow. So, yeah, you put it in low, low first gear. Yeah. And um, you run it up 4,000 RPM and you could crawl beside it fashion minute ago. <laughs> it's so much fun. You just basically. You don't it's, really do anything other than floor, and you're like, it's all right, a, I'm gonna walk. If it'll if it'll hook up, it'll go. If okay. I don't hang up underneath it, yeah. it'll go. You know, with the 35 and stuff, it's got decent ground clearance and stuff. It's still IFS, um, but I I've I've actually I enjoy pushing an IFS truck. I think yeah. it's it's fun to me. I, you I know? had a lot of fun doing it, and I love <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I love getting up because it's it's funny because it's people kind of it's underestimated a little bit. In fact, the way it got its name, Little Black Toyota, that's another story, but um. <laughs> Um, it's fun. You get in a lot of 35 inch solid axle Jeep guys and stuff, yeah. and they just kind of blow it away. But it, the truck works really, really well. But all that to say is, I've actually had a ton of fun pushing hers around because it's kind of like I'm almost going back a little bit. Like I have to think a little more yeah. about driving. You're back to almost a little more momentum off roading, a, a little, little more like momentum, planning, having yeah, a plan. Exactly. Ahead. You know, you, you're watching your lines a little better, you know, and it's like, you know, this is kind of fun. It's kind of the reason I never wanted like a full blown you know rock buggy on 44 is like right. you drive to some tough trails to actually challenge that challenge it but 35 is an ifs you could still go run god bull up in big bear and stuff and it's still a challenging trail you know you could still have a lot of fun pushing the rig and everything doing that so, yeah it's so great yeah i love it man so I've, yeah all i'd say i've had a ton of fun with this thing i was like it's bringing a smile on my face so like, i'm glad i brought it man. and you got a new nickname out of it too i did yeah <laughs> everybody called you mom, mom. Yeah, that's why I was like, well, I'm red one now because I wasn't leader, red leader today anymore. Yeah, not anymore. I'm red mom now. Ian stole it. <laughs> he stole it, which he did a phenomenal job today. I was Dude, so happy about that. Yeah, he 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 stepped right in, man. He's another one of my 3 a.m. friends right there. It? Ian, absolutely, yeah. 
Oh, I know, I know something about that too. I, I don't know if you, if oh, Sean's no. told you or not, but oh, we, no. we can have a discussion. Oh, we're definitely okay. not putting it on here oh, just in okay. case Ian okay. watches. Like, Fair we're enough, definitely yeah. gonna yeah. we're gonna keep that on the DL. Like, <laughs> right. so uh, what's your favorite part of the expedition? Honestly, I I enjoy. There's a lot of people that come to these things that I see once a year, and okay. sometimes if I get lucky, I'll kind of mix them in throughout the year. Um, the willing's always fun, you know. I enjoy trail leading. I like I enjoy having a group and, and kind of building, you know, uh, a group together, you know, yeah. camaraderie or amongst it. But I really enjoy like cam night, hanging around the fire and stuff. Like yeah. to me, that's so great. much fun and meet new people and. Um, I've sat and talked. Well, I mean, you, for example, man, I've never met you before, and I've had a ball just sitting there while we're waiting on other people to go through something, exactly. just hanging out and at camp last night, just sitting there BSing about family and stuff. And like to me, that's probably my favorite part. Braxton's drones in the air again. Braxton drones in the air again. Where's hashtag? Where's Braxton? Exactly. <laughs> Dude, that's not on somebody's truck next year. I'm gonna have Dude, to play. It needs to be. I'm making a list on my phone of my good. Because yeah, uh, the the last kind of big question I have for you: If someone's contemplating coming out on an expedition, like what's the most important piece of adv- of of like vehicle advice or off road driving advice? What do, what do you want them to know? I I think, and this is probably going to sound cliche, and I don't I don't mean it like this, but come with a good attitude. You know, you don't have to have Rogue does such a good job of pushing the, putting these trails and stuff together. You know, like seven mile rim and stuff. You you know, I mean, well, look, you ran it in a stock truck. You know. I wouldn't tell someone with a bad attitude that like cares a whole lot about the rig to bring oh, a I really truck. Care a lot about it though. <laughs> you do, but but you're also you've got a good attitude. Like you know that we're going to get you through it, and like you know we're not going to purposely destroy your truck. Right. You know, come with a good attitude. Throw some sliders on your truck, a good set of tires, and um, throw a Coleman stove in the back and like send it. I mean, have you been in my truck? Are you, are you well, keeping I mean, my stove? Even my <laughs> setup. I mean, I've been doing it a long time and. And, um, well, part of that is we're, you know, Andrew and I will live out of these two trucks, mine and hers for two weeks at a time. Okay. You know, third gen four runner small. Yeah. They're not, not a big, big truck. Yeah. Same thing with Nick's truck, his Xterra. It's not a big truck and it's taken us a lot of time to kind of pack it down. So it's weird when we go on a trip like this, I'm like, man, I got all this room. I have no idea what to do with, you know, <laughs> but that's why, but you don't need a lot of stuff. You buy quality, good stuff. You know, that's going to last, but you don't, you don't need everything in the kitchen sink. Yeah. You know, bring the essentials, fill your fridge or cooler full of beer and come out and have a good time. You don't, you don't have to go spend a bunch of money you on a rooftop time. You, you can't really if that's don't. what you want. Really and it, but I, there were times on this trip, I was really glad I didn't have much extra thing. weight up top. I've got a rooftop tent at home sitting in my garage right now, and it's a great, comfortable tent. But there's a lot to be said about pitching my little pop-up on the ground and crawling in at night. And it goes up in three seconds, and you it know, takes another it 15 minutes to put away. It doesn't weigh anything. <laughs> like, it takes 20 seconds to put away, you know, a couple minutes. <laughs> it's like 5, 10. You watch me, okay. Yeah, we watch it's you this five morning. Five minutes better now. <laughs> It, it, there's a lot to be it said. It wasn't wildland yeah. coffee and putting away a shower kit. But there's a lot to be said about that. Like you, you don't don't feel like you gotta come out here on one ton of the forties because you don't. Come out here with a good attitude, a good set of tires, go a set of sliders on your truck and, and send it. At sliders home. and skids. I, sliders I, and skid is I've huge. used the crap out of the yeah, one. I mean, I and that. like I said, Andrew's truck very mild lift. The one thing I did put on it's factory skid plates. They're they're stamp sheet now. They're not right. but I put sliders. Because yeah. I'm like, if anything's going to happen, I want something down the side that I can kick off of if I need to, you know. Yeah. And it's it's been perfect for this trip. 32 inch tires. I love it. Okay. Yeah, it's so great. I know. Sweet. Thanks, man. That's all. That's all. Oh, yeah. That's that's it. We get, no, we can keep talking. Well, I mean, we can talk for an hour. <laughs> well, if I do this six times, we'll be at an hour. All right. All right. Fair enough. People get tired of me pretty quick. So. No, they won't. They won't. They're going to have more questions. Plus, Will. So, my name's uh, Nick Schulte. I'm one of the Rogue Overland owners. Uh, I've been a part of it since 2016 at its conception. Okay. Uh, you know, we're on our seventh annual Rogue Overland Expedition. I had to clarify with Mike about how to say those words correctly because I've seen I've seen a lot of hashtags, but I hadn't seen that one as a hashtag enough, I don't think, on the back yeah. of the vehicles. <laughs> yeah. So you you are one of the Nicks, basically. Like yeah. You, you yep. and, and Sabachi are the Me and Sabachi, we are the, known as the Nicks. <laughs> I had to clarify the other day because I realized I'd been emailing with a Nick and then I panicked because I wasn't sure if it was you or him. It was him. It, it was him. Yeah. But like, for a hot moment, I was like, because I was talking to you, I was like, oh no, is that the guy I've been talking with the whole time? Because I was saying <laughs> something to Sabati. I was like, he kind of looked at me questioning. I was like, and I had that panic moment. It was like, did we have an interaction with someone else? And I thought it was 
Yeah, it's confusing because we're both Nick. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you guys get around it? Like, you don't really. It's just the Knicks. Uh, it's, uh, I usually just get called Schulte. Okay. Um, and you both drive x Yep. You guys, you guys have a lot of synergy. You're very on brand. Yeah, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of things. Uh, we're both February birthdays, too. Really? We're, uh, has, uh, we're like six days apart at our birthdays and a few other years apart on, uh, on age. But, um, but yeah, um, we both have the same last name. You're not the same last name. The, the, the same the, initial. Same initial. Yeah. So no uh, one could be Nick S because you're yeah, both Nick. We're S. both Nick S. Uh, his <laughs> his exterior is one year older than mine. Mine's uh, 2002. This is 2000. Yeah, but yours is running. Uh, there's that. I, I try not to put that D there. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll edit that out. Yeah. yeah we'll, no, you're good. You're good. Uh, but yeah, uh, kind of both progressed. We've bounced each, uh, ideas off each other to progress our ideas where they uh where you see them now with Dude, the they're there. both they look fantastic i had so much fun watching you go today because it looked like you literally didn't give a shit about where you went what you did that you picked the line and the truck did exactly what you wanted it to do yeah <laughs> well i mean it's taken a long time to get there right i mean but you, you know one of the things with this is you got to start somewhere and it's we we started off uh even I, i'll just say me i started off with a. A low slung Xterra, and and just modified it throughout the years. All right, it still says it's recording. So when it processes later, all right, it should jump us back into it. So you broke a motor mount. Yeah, so I broke a motor mount. Uh, we cut a Gatorade bottle in half, and uh, and then we uh, ducked it, taped it to my intake tube because my intake tube had ripped apart. Okay. Uh, it was going up one of the obstacles that we actually uh, really? on seven mile rim. The optional line going up the uh, the, the stairs. Yeah, uh, I try to go up the stairs. Uh, incredibly inexperienced. I had a buddy with mine, and he was like, "Go for it, go for it." I was like, "All right." You went up. Leg is shaking. Armor. Leg, yes. Leg is shaking to death on the clutch pedal, <laughs> trying to do everything. And yeah. then this happened. I was like, uh, "I'm gonna just go." Uh, but that was the the beginning of uh, of building my confidence. They got you all the way. They got you started. How'd you yeah. get into off roading in general? Just is something I was always interested in. Nice. Yeah. I, I got it. I went from imports tuners to to uh which what import tuners were you? Uh let's see. I lived in England. I had an S13 with a C A eighteen D E T in it. Um I had a Skyline Specialist blueprint the motor for me. Really? Um so I was pushing about three hundred and twenty horsepower out of the car. Those cars don't weigh uh, anything. Yeah. Right? I had a little disco potato turbo in it. What is that? A GT twenty eight RS? Um, I think is the right thing. It's been a long time since I've been in tuner cars. <laughs> um, but uh, I had that. I had an Acura Integra. Uh, I had a 240SX a long time ago. Um, I currently have a little toy that I'm, I'm doing a, a resto mod on, but uh, I got an 84300ZX. Nice. Um, Twin turbo? Non-turbo. Non-turbo, okay. Uh, but I'm probably going to stick an LS in it. I don't blame you. That engine bay looks like a snake pit, like from yeah. stock. Like it's there's lines <laughs> ever. I always wanted to make a t-shirt of Indiana Jones trying to swing over the engine bay with 300 ZX because he was afraid of snakes. I, I thought that was hilarious. It's, uh, like it's <laughs> it's crazy. So like 84 was was one of the first years that they really got into like the EVAP system. I, I mean the the 280Z X's they all they, they were the first to get the, the fuel injection uh, out of the that was an L28 series motor. Uh, Inline straight six, and yeah. then they umped it up to a beach, uh, which is basically a smaller version than the same engine that I have in the Xterra because I have a, a VG33 essentially. Okay. Um, mine's just supercharged, so it's the VG33 ER, but uh, I could get all crazy with the names. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so just like seeing that, and then compared to where it's at now with within mine, it's crazy to see where they started and where they got to because they had a lot of emissions on it, right? Um, mine was uh, an Arizona based car. Oh, yeah. um, so it didn't have as many as like pick one up from California, but there were still some some things. That's like, I love, I, like as much as we're like an off road podcast, we're still car people at heart. So like, yeah, we, yeah. we're into that subject. I'd love to have a three fifty six. I'm never going to have a three fifty six. I don't have Porsche money. I have Beetle money, so I'm going to go get a Beetle eventually. And then Sean was talking about Baja Bug the other day, and I was like, exactly, that's yeah. where I want to go. So that that's we're we're definitely with you on that. I I, I had the question on here. What are you driving this trip? But you you said your Xterra. Um, and it's still moving, so I'm going to skip that one. What well, you... I'll, I'll just say, so it's a 2002 
Nissan Xterra SC. It's a supercharged five speed. Uh, it's got a solid axle swap kit in it. Um, well, not really a kit, it's a custom build. And then, so it's a three link with uh, 12 inch coilovers. Um, Dude, I, I've had so much fun watching them move around. Yeah. Like it look, it just soaks up everything it looks like. It does, it does really well. Um, this is the, the first time since I think about 2012 that I've taken it on such a long trip. Okay. Um, because I've always had kind of transmission issues. Okay. Trying to teach myself some more repair. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just gave up and I said, the hell with it. I'm just going to buy a reman. Okay. So I bought a reman and and uh, here we are today with it. Right. And it worked fine. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite part of these expeditions? For me, it's all about seeing the people grow and enjoy, right? Um, I like getting out here into the to the wilderness and and into the backcountry, but then seeing some of these these people that we've seen throughout the years, you can see their experience change, their experience grow, um, and then just making the memories and creating all the friendships with all these people. Like it's it's absolutely amazing. It's a solid group. It is, and, and you know that's something that we we kind of touched on today a little bit. We had a little bit of an issue on, on the road today, and uh, you know just the, the core of the group is really solid, but then. Because of that, it it also like kind of cultivates in this other group of people that are like they feel very welcome. Yeah, you know, and one of the priorities that we always have is making sure that anytime something does happen, nothing skips a beat to the point where any of the additional attendees um, feel any sense of it. You know, we want to keep pressing on, so we always yeah. are having those contingencies. To Dude, kind of it was through. amazing today. Watch it. Yeah. Well, and to be honest, we ran into crap yesterday. Like that pass was snowed out. Yeah. We're and it did, it literally did all of Mike's. It's like you walked up and it was like, mm -mm. No, it's because it's me. <laughs> all right. We're recording. Again. <laughs> anyway, so we, we dealt with stuff and we went through it. And I, I am impressed. Not, I, I respect and, and impressed with the way that your leadership team is set up. Like it lit, we didn't miss a beat. Like, well, so I mean, that's one of the things is that we've, we've kind of learned throughout the years. So, so Nick and I, we've really, We've been leading organized, major, large organized events for probably about a decade. Okay. And we've progressed to where we are now, and we've learned how to, you know, we started off with like 12. Right. And then we kind of, all right, we can open up that spectrum a little bit more. And and then now we realized, all right, now we got to make room for these sponsors. We got to, and now we got our team. Right. And then, so now we've broken it out into these columns, which we lovingly call squadrons <laughs> because, you know, we have a rogue name. So we yeah. just kind of, since we have a little bit of a Star Wars uh, interest, <laughs> um, case in point, I'm wearing a Boba Fett onesie as a 37 year old man. Uh, Damn, you're only 37? Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, thank you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we, we've just kind of turned it into these squadron assignments. We're trying to spread out the the type of vehicle um, because we know that the type of vehicle can cause some concern on, yeah. on some of these trails. Um, and uh, and that really helps us kind of speed through some of these things because we're trying to herd uh, 40 vehicles through a, a, a 90 mile trek for a day to include maybe 25 miles of, of trail. Yeah, it can get challenging and it can be taxing and and stressful and uh, um, well, especially out here because I feel like we've been in like it feels like we're sitting on Mars right now, which is tan Mars. Yeah, but we were in high snow alpine mountains yesterday, down into the forest. Like we've been well, that's one of the things that we like to do is is that we want to make sure that we can give people a taste of the different regions. And it's not just all focused on one thing. Yeah. And, and we've only and we've done it all within two hours of it, right? Basically. And our well, and our overall grassroots is all comes from rock crawling. You know, we we started rock crawling with IFS and 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 progressed into the solid axle. Found some buddies that were very capable and interested in the, the things too. That kind of had a background in that stuff. And, okay. And and again, here we are today. That core group kind of stayed with it, and we've just kind of built this into what it is now. It's it's so great. It's so much fun. Last thing is if someone's contemplating coming, what's the important piece of information that you want them to know, be it vehicle advice or off-road driving advice, or what's the thing that to you is the one thing they need to know? Just be prepared for, uh, for an adventure. Uh, we, we, we prioritize making this into an adventure. Um, and we want um, people to come with an open mind um, and understand that we do sometimes have to adapt on the fly. Um, and that we will try our hardest to to keep somebody comfortable, but also we want them to grow. So we want to push them through that comfort level 
Um, I mean, look, we got your your Sequoia through some <laughs> insane stuff that probably everybody would be like, oh, I got to turn around. I can't do that at all. I, I and, shouldn't have walked up the Wipeout Hill. I should have just stayed in the back and gone up to it and gone in it cold. Yeah. But I had to I had to go talk to the Jeep guy for a second. And then I looked over and I was like, what are we doing? Yeah. Oh, there's no bypass. I'm definitely right. doing and that. As, <laughs> as we mentioned, right? How many Jeep crews go up to that? They've got these built rigs. Right. And they're like, uh-uh, I'm not going up it. And we... For lack of a better word, we just kind of said no. Every single person's going yeah. down. It. We're not giving you an option. It was fantastic. And I love everybody got down it. it. Yeah, no issues, no concerns, no no craziness happened either, yeah. right? And that's our that's the other thing is is that we're going to put you in these situations, but we're not going to put you in a situation where it's going to jeopardize your safety or jeopardize your vehicle, right? Because oh, we stress the importance of making sure that you're paying attention to your people. Um, that are that are out there spotting. We have designated spotters. We have designated people that are doing these things to ensure that we have the safety of everybody in mind, right? Yeah. Um, and we'll 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 stage things in a way that makes sure that 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 protection kind of continues and and kind of creates that nice little bubble around everybody. I love that. Um, and then come here ready to make friends. Be, oh, don't absolutely. be afraid to be social. Get out there, hang out with people. Um, one of the things we always love to do is do some sort of a potluck. Yeah. The potluck really brings the 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 family together, right? Because everybody's not eating at their vehicle. We're all eating in the same space, right? And you'll see that if we do that in a beginning part, you'll see the 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 fire ring grow <laughs> by the end of the trip because yeah. of that, right? Absolutely. Um, and especially on that last night. Um, but really, we just we want to make sure everybody has a great experience. And that is, it truly enjoys everything. It is, it's been a fantastic experience. I've loved every, I've literally loved all of it. There's has, there's been a little downtime sometimes, but like we're still sitting out here. It's a, it's a great place to be. Yeah. I mean, we want to make sure that we get to camp at a good time. People got time to cook some dinner, still spend time to re rack around a fire. Yeah. Um, and then if they want to go to bed early, they still have time, but they've had that opportunity to socialize if they want to. Yeah, because I'm I'm still on that central time. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm the guy at 945. We're like, all right, are you guys, how late are we staying up? I, I get it, right? I'm from central time too. That's right. In you're down in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. it's fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm Sean. You're Sean? <laughs> no, I'm a. Uh... Is it for legal reasons? No, it's only no, Sean. No, no, no. no. Uh, I was feeling weird. Uh, I'm Sean Jorgensen. Uh, Dude, I don't know. I have a. I did hear your last name. That's yeah. I was like, I was just going to call you Beardo. Like, I go by a series <laughs> of different names. Uh, so the truck has the license plate Beardo. Right. Which has uh, started off as I work nights at work sometimes. We work overnight. So we sleep all day. We work all night. Um, and those come and go between like maybe one day I'm working days and then I will go to a night. So it, like you just oh, end man. up in a very weird stupor of like excitement slash basically punch drunk, but not having drank anything. Uh, and my buddy and I are sitting there and we're trying to check some unclassified emails. And it was like, dude, I want to get a different license plate because I think the new blue style is better. And I didn't want the like home is Nevada. Yeah. And so we tossed around like 25 different names and Beardo stuck. Okay. Um, and at the time I had uh, much like the uh, the Beck brothers that are out here this week, yeah. had a beard. It was growing. Uh, and the nickname kind of like stuck around and then the plate came. Okay. And then everyone's like, that's your nickname. And I'm like, there's so many other different names. <laughs> so on social media, I think mine is Spanky Spankerton or Spankerton. That's you on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Which goes back to a different story growing up as a kid where uh, some of the family that I grew up went to high school with and then uh, I go home. My buddy was trying to date their daughter at the time and they're they're up sick uh, watching uh, Little Rascals. OK. And he's like, you look like Spanky Spankerton <laughs> or Spanky. And he uh, and then it became Spanky Spankerton. And then, well, you need a last name, so it's Morehouse. So I had a whole series of names. <laughs> I have a nickname growing up that was Bubba. I had Beardo. Right. And then because I work closely with the military and all pilots have to have call signs, yep. I'm an engineer. I'm not a pilot. I despise having it. But if you fight it, you're going to get stuck with it. Yes. Mine that I got stuck with that I fought very tooth and nail <laughs> was Viking, which I don't have it on right now, but hence the Viking yeah. knitted cap with uh, the buddy that I made Beardo with, his wife, I've become super close with their family, Yeah, uh, knitted or crocheted, I don't know the difference, okay, uh, I don't know the actual, the Viking hat. And the best part was she presented that uh, and it it was like the best gift ever. 
And the best part was it took her two weeks at the yarn store to pick up the orange the of the beard. beard. It has an attached beard. <laughs> yeah. I, saw I just that. never use it because it gets tangled. The last night or two nights ago? Two nights ago. Okay. <laughs> and it's like the same, like, Scandinavian, yeah. like, just really nice. It was, like, done. down to your belly button. Oh, yeah. The whole, yeah, it was fantastic. So we have that. Uh, Viking. Uh, my buddy's kids call me Shawnee Dew. So there's a whole, <laughs> there's a whole host of various names. But uh, my legal name <laughs> is Sean. <laughs> uh yeah that's why and the fj has beardo they did try to call sign beardo and i was like dude i don't really want a beardo call sign it's cool and i would take it um but i'm gonna have to get a new license plate because i'm not gonna be that guy that has 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 anything like the truck can be beardo right uh i'm not gonna associate that with work and try to and sorry i'm from kentucky we heard jay do that on the radio the other day right (laughs) it's like the guy from kentucky i was like close enough jay that works let's (laughs) yeah uh how long have you been uh with the road guys so I met the road guys uh, back in, I want to say 2015. Okay. And so one of those founding members uh, from back then lived on the same neighborhood that I did. I'd bought a house and they were at the end of the cul-de-sac and we must've drove past each other for a solid like six to nine months before. And we were the same kind of personality. We'd pull in, close the garage door and then and turn then off the out. truck and get out. <laughs> and his wife was like, you know, you have to go say hi to him. <laughs> and it was it was about like another maybe a few weeks before I finally seen all of the rest of them out there. Okay. And um both Nick's were here. This was when Schulte wasn't living in Texas at the time. Right. And so they were all there. And the problem was I couldn't tell an Xterra apart from an Xterra. Neither could I. And so I met a Nick in a gray one, a Nick in a silver or in a yellow one, and a and an Andrew in a white one. Okay. There are different generations, and I wasn't up to speed on any of that yet. I still didn't know there were two different generations. <laughs> right? There's a different generation. There's different generations on this trip. Yeah. Um, so I'd met them all. The problem was like I met one, I was really excited, and then I called them all the wrong names uh <laughs> during the process of the next one. And then they had some patches and they had some stickers. I went and checked out some of their YouTube stuff. And it had made sense. I was kind of looking for that kind of community to just get attached with and and have guys to go wheel with. I didn't ever, 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 ever think in 2015 that was going to set the precedence for where we're here in 23. Right. Like that never even kind of crossed my mind for how it was going to occur. And I mean, it, it really just kind of snowballed. I went on trips. I would take off work to make sure I could sign up for them. Okay. Um, and then it was, hey, man, you're kind of, you know, you understand what we're doing. You understand what we're doing here, how we're doing it. You're well equipped. You're not. I mean, the hard part is like being able to be self-sufficient, equipped, and then go yeah. out. And it naturally had hung out enough. They're like, all right, we want you to kind of do a little bit more and start asking more. And and it was much different from like, it was just buddies. Yeah. And then it has grown to, I mean, we have 40, 40 trucks here. Yeah. Which the anxiety level. And we didn't lose anybody. We didn't lose anyone yet. We lost a couple of Xterras. Uh, <laughs> but that was for a very short a, amount of a time. A moment of peace. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, a few engine blown. Um, uh, yeah. It's... Two, two engines blew. <laughs> two Nissan. Nissans. <laughs> uh, on this trip. First gen Xterras. Um, Wait, we lost two? Wayne didn't make it to the trip, unfortunately. Oh, that's right. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I on, remember... the, on the drive up, uh, uh, suffered catastrophic engine failure from heating. And basically boiled all the all the uh, internals and most likely cracked ahead which is why you're not a nissan uh so it was going back like i there was a solid possibility i could have started in nissan when i got into off-roading but um, you didn't i didn't <laughs> and i think at the time i mean i don't know that i was smart enough then i was a kid yeah. but most of my buddies were in toyotas okay and so my first interaction with actual wheeling um the first car i had bought was a 65 baja bug that thing broke down on the way with the intention to go to Sears to buy tools. That's right. You told me this story. <laughs> it broke down. <laughs> on so the way I, to buy tools. I pushed it down the street yeah. to the side of the road. And then I walked like two more miles to Sears when they used to sell Craftsman <laughs> when they were open. Right. And uh, bought it and then bought the biggest kit I could afford and uh, walked my my happy little kid down uh, down the street and laid under it till the wee hours of the night, fixed it and got it back on the road. My parents were confused. This was like, I didn't even have a cell phone. Like I'd barely even bought like a flip phone and it died. And you showed up with a Baja bug. And it did, well, no, they had known I had this oh, okay. Baja bug. I'm assuming they figured that. Yeah. But I didn't have a cell phone because it died because I didn't have a cigarette lighter because it was a Baja bug. <laughs> uh, went on and then eventually had jumped into an 83 Toyota pickup. Okay. So like a single cab. Yeah. Solid axle. I mean, this thing was basically a tractor. 
Um, I mean, kind of still are, but yeah, I, they are. They're great. I mean, Mike has one, and maybe mine sounds like a tractor. Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> it's got a V eight. That might have hit the exhaust a little bit. <laughs> it, it sounded like that before we got. Uh, that's fair. As yeah. long as you've gained no squeaks and lost no squeaks, uh, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get on the interstate tomorrow and really, really kind of open it up. There you go. As long as it tracks mostly straight, or at least as straight as it used to. Yeah, uh, and even that will be interesting to see. Yeah. <laughs> There were enough bounces. Oh boy! Yeah, I'm I'm happy with mine so far. But the '83 uh, had that did a bunch of stuff to it. Kind of uh, had some good friends that were into wheeling and kind of understanding off road. I mean, we're talking like graded dirt roads, but right? Yeah, was where it was at. Um, I mean, we did the most peaceful things that we did. Today. Oh yeah, the peaceful <laughs> things today. Like I was freaking out. Yeah, uh, some of the hill climbs uh, were nothing, but like oh boy, we we. Like I used to air down by counting how long I air down, and it was like nine seconds of holding the valve, and I would never air back up. <laughs> Having a compressor on board was not a thing. Yeah, um, I have to actually do that in a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> my yep. little energy has got to get after it. We again. all have to air up. Um, so moved from the eighty three to a. Uh, at the time, I was like, man, oh no, I love the eighty three. Uh, some guy loved it more and <laughs> ran into me at a red light. So I stopped the. I never, I never used to stop for yellow lights. And this was yeah. like an early stop. Okay. I had room to run it easy. It was Mother's Day. Stop. Uh, basically, stop for the light. I'm just relaxing. It's Mother's Day. I was in college. I'd just taken, uh, we had some like finals at the time. So I had, I'd been slept, sleeping in. Yeah. Took a shower. And it was like, the only thing I had to do that day was like, go to dinner with my yeah. parents. Uh, they were in town. So we go to go to dinner. I'd taken a shower. I was like super relaxed. And I'm sitting at the light and it, a uh, brand new Denali with oh, like no. 4,000 miles on it. Oh, no. uh, fully loaded, uh, ran the light at 80 and basically oh. took me through the intersection of airborne. I rolled, hit a wall and about tried to go down the wall. Oh, man. So the problem is the cell phone I finally had that I didn't have in the Volkswagen <laughs> went flying. Exactly. Thankfully, I didn't hit anyone in the crosswalk and uh, the pedestrian ran it he's like dude are you alive and i was like i think so did i kill someone and i didn't realize what was going on because like i was legit convinced my buddy was just going to flip it over and i would get a new windshield yeah. and i'd go see my parents for dinner and lo and behold like Ever. call them i didn't know my dad's number so i called my mom i was like hey mom it's sean i was like everything's cool but like can you have dad answer like can i talk to dad real quick i'm gonna be late and oh, she's no. like okay and dad gets on and I was like, hey, dude. And he's like, what's up? And I was like, I rolled my truck. <laughs> and at that point, I think I blacked out. Okay. But I was still hanging from the seatbelt. Oh, no. So uh, I could hear the ambulance. The dude that, like, came up, helped, and then, like, disappeared. Yeah. Uh, another premonition. Another premonition, dude. <laughs> They've happened. There's a number of them. And it's funny because I was thinking about this as we had talked yesterday about some yeah. of this. They're, they're starting to add up. But this premonition that had shown up to help me call this dude, we couldn't even call him back. So like really it never even rang a phone when we're like hey man thanks for helping us out <laughs> so it's got to be that um so they my parents ended up making it up yeah i had crawled down the hill through the wall almost okay. into a swimming pool to then crawl out to sit on the bumper of the ambulance okay or the fire truck that was there the medevac landed in the middle of the intersection like i'm thinking that this whole time i've killed someone yeah and uh and they're like no no no, we won't put you on the car yeah they were like wait were you in that did you have a passenger and i was like yeah i was in that and they're like how did you get out like you look at the window i'm a big dude i wasn't i was a big dude back then yeah i was even bigger and the window we went through was like it basically opening your microwave up like okay. that's that's what i got to crawl out oh, but man. like i have just glimpses of it <laughs> and so uh get through that uh my parents show up to the thing ambulance goes in i'm fully like coherent the whole time i'm like calling out the streets we're going on the hospital we're going to go to and the guy's like what is going on <laughs> <laughs> uh turned out pretty entertaining uh basically out of it i i think the only thing that really happened was like i violently dislocated my shoulder okay and it went back in which would then come back to haunt me later in life yeah, yeah. as i've like destroyed every bit of my shoulder <laughs> um so that truck was gone got an naturally stayed with toyota and picked yep. up a little single cab pickup uh, another tacoma in she college survived so i survived <laughs> um found that thing loved it uh started modding it and was doing more deserty stuff being okay. down in SoCal. So it was a lot easier to like run down to Glamis, yeah. Ocotillo Wells, and that kind of fit the lifestyle of the time since I clearly wasn't rock crawling. <laughs> uh, and then had uh, met a girl and figured, you know, I'd gotten gotten out of college, got my big boy job, met a girl, and I was like, I'm not ready to settle down and buy a house yet, but hey, I'll, I'll buy like a practical vehicle. And I had been looking at the FJ for years. They released them in seven, and I finally had the means. 
uh, the desire and the cash to go buy one in 12. Nice. Basically ordered it brand new, zero miles from the dealer. That's the one that's here? That's the one that's here. It has oh, three, three, or had three miles when I bought it. Uh, I probably put 30,000 uh, miles in like the first year or two okay. attempting to start that family that ended up not happening <laughs> um, and then moved on to uh, shoot. I think I've gotten in like two or three accidents and thankfully it hasn't been enough to ultimately destroy it, Okay, but it's been rear-ended. I jacked up my neck and back and that uh, I ruined it a buddy because uh, we were in silt, which is why I'm so uh, big on not stopping and stopping. Silt. Sense, yeah. <laughs> Calling it out. Yeah. Um, that's a fun one. Uh, but basically, it has been spotted, done uh, it, at the garage. And if I needed the tools, it was by the tools. If I needed yeah. to learn the knowledge, uh, I could do them. Yeah. And then uh, so, a fun, I was going to say a fun story was a transmission. Okay, yeah. Right? That's where I was going <laughs> it is a six-speed manual. Uh, there are times where mods don't always work well with each other. <laughs> and like it's not broken because it's a Toyota. It's broken because I tried to, to enhance something that didn't need to be enhanced to begin with. Toyota was like, no, no, we already did. Yeah, that. we already did this, and it was great. And I wholly regret some of that partially. Okay. Um, some of the stuff with the clutch, it needed a clutch about a hundred thousand miles, and uh, some of the chirping thing that was on with that throw up bearing, really probably squeaky somewhere else, and I was just eager to change something. <laughs> so that set down the path of ultimately uh, wearing synchros further than they could go. And Andrew, what a good buddy of mine at this point. We've hung out. He's got a kid. Uh, I visit them regularly. We'll go have dinners and still off-roading camp together. Yeah. He goes, uh, you know, you're looking for a rebuilt transmission or a shop. He goes, you, you call yourself an engineer, but you're not willing to jump into a transmission. And I was like, man, dude, like, this is Toyota's most complicated six-speed. Yeah. It's not, like, it's not in my wheelhouse. I'm not a transmission guy. He's like, yeah, but the funny thing is, like, a guy named Earl, he's only got, like, three fingers on each hand. He not only rebuilds transmission, he owns, he owns the business that rebuilds them. Yeah. So I it, it took a minute to reflect on it. And in that moment, I was like, you're right. I'll try. And if it breaks, worst case scenario, I tell everyone I rebuilt it, and I just go buy a new transmission. Right. Which probably would have been the result anyways. <laughs> but I'm thankful to say that I have 40,000 miles okay. on the rebuilt trans. That you did. That I did. And basically, the only issues I've had continue to be the ones I have that are caused by myself, which is uh, adding too many skip plates underneath. So basically, all the heat gets too trapped in there. Okay. Uh, and then one of the mods was rerouting some of the the, uh, the clutch fuel, the clutch fluid lines. Okay. And they boil. Oh no. So all of that's been mostly mitigated. We haven't had that issue creep back up again. Um, but in that same time, I also added an Atlas four speed. Okay. So that's a it's like a two hundred plus to one crawl ratio. Which is really just for showing off. Right. Um, but the nice thing is I have two different ratios I can pick from. And then I can just like go be dumb and walk next to the car as it idles up something. Right. Which it is really nice to be able to pick like a fourth gear. And I just put it in fourth gear and then I drive. Okay. But I have the option of selecting different low ranges. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Which is handy. When I got used to, uh, I, I, I love the FJ and it's like I would probably like murder someone at that point like i feel like it's a child i don't have children right but i imagine like someone that does like feels the same about it uh so i got tired of it like the risk of it potentially being taken off the road yeah so probably for about the last thirty thousand miles it's been only trip miles or candy okay. which is awesome but then i finally also bought a daily driver that i tell everyone is my like my turd box or my shit box is and this, uh, is this the car you went to meet mike in the middle of the night in i did I did meet Mike. I don't know if he told that story. He didn't. He he was going to let you tell it. Okay. So <laughs> uh, I bought a daily of a 19 WRX. Okay. And I swore to everyone, and it was a lie, <laughs> uh, that I wasn't going to mod it. It was really just a matter of how long could I prolong right, yeah. the feeling and the sensation. Yeah. Um, so I love the WRX. It has gotten me in trouble. It has gotten me at gunpoint for speeding. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, at all times, I've gotten to keep the car. Um I feel like Nevada cops are a little calmer about that. Like, they're, they're, it's the desert. Like, what else are you going to do? Like, so, when the guy pulled me over, he was really mad. And he goes, why? And he goes, why don't I take your car and why don't I shoot you? And I said, you're not going to believe me. <laughs> but if you give me a second, I'll tell you the story. <laughs> and it really came down to, I said, sir, with all due respect, I have 10 statute miles of visibility. It's like, that's the horizon when the ground is level and no yeah. hills. I said, the last guy I passed was six miles ago. And you wouldn't believe it when I shifted from first to second, I hit that shift perfect. <laughs> and I said, if I can do it from first to second and second to third, we'll keep going. The problem is from fifth to sixth, I did it. And I figured at that point, I've earned red line. 
<laughs> uh, so I locked up the brakes doing 165. Oh, man. And smoked the tires coming to a stop. Uh, I was pulled over, windows down, hands on the steering wheel, keys on the roof. Yeah. Uh, before he jumped the road. Right. We didn't even chirp you. radar. We didn't do anything. And it was really great because I was going the long way from Vegas to Pahrump okay. to a Porsche of America event at one of the that at this speedway over there. So everyone was really mad that I was late. <laughs> uh, and I was like, what happened? Did you get a speeding ticket? And I was like, I did. And literally six people handed me lawyer cards. Yeah. Because uh, in Vegas, it's pay to play, okay. which uh, respectfully, like I understand speed has a result of hurting yes. people. But I had 10, 10, I had 10 miles of visibility. I could see yeah. the horizon. The last guy I passed was so far ago yeah. and like unfortunately like you chose to be a law enforcement officer and sometimes that means you get to scrape brains up yeah but you can pay and my insurance will cover it <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's good maybe it's bad um so you've had that speed before going yeah, to see mike i i did uh so the funny story with mike uh and the subaru in this case was mike's wife andrea yeah a uh, great woman i love her uh part of meeting her I thought I got like a good buddy, Mike, but like, I also got a second family. Yeah. Um, so when they, when one of the shared passions for off-roading with Mike and Andrea was Andrew was doing the all women's rally, the rebel, yep. um, which I'm sure you've seen, heard, and hopefully get to interview some people on numerous contestants have been on Great. already. So Great. the audience so, is aware of the rebel so it should be yeah, <laughs> perfectly aware. So this, uh, this rally is huge and crazy. Yeah. And the problem is until Mike got more involved in it, we used to sit there at work and be talking and it would be like nail biting because yeah. there's no visibility into it other than like the small trackers yeah. that go on. And you're like, why are they stopped here? Why are they stopped here? And we would be texting hours, hours at a time trying to figure out different things to make sure they're all right. Uh, she's gone through a couple different partners and a couple different rate teams. She's a great navigator and a lot of people want her on her team. Dude, the navigators are witchcraft. They, like <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. I can do it in the air. I can't do it on the ground. It's witchcraft. And I talk like I can and I can't. Yeah. Um, but one of her partners at one point was FJ Anna. Okay. And she's got a, um, I think it's a not, I think it's a 10 or 11 okay. trail teams, FJ, that basically matches mine almost part for part. Okay. Minus the transmission. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when Anna and her were competing, I basically told them, I was like, you have a spare FJ. We'll figure it out at the Any, end. Anything you need, you will we'll take finish, it off. <laughs> you will finish the race. Awesome. Uh, and they, I mean, I still to this day, would would hand over whatever parts to make it figure it out and we'll, we'll figure it out later yeah um so on this particular 22 uh last year they were doing the rally well, this was last year this was last year oh man it's about 10 15 at night uh mike is now on the staff of of the rally team right. doing the mechanic stuff. Mechanic. yeah and uh i get a call and much like the last few times i mean this this isn't the first time that i have <laughs> literally taken the phone call and been like I will go put pants on. He, he referred to you as a 3 a.m. print. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. No, it, it is uh, like I don't there's there's only a few people that basically if you text or call after a certain hour, like there's not even a notice that like I'm on mute. You're just going to go through. Right. Um, and he understands like you're going to call until I answer because I'm probably sleeping and I probably sleep heavy. <laughs> but this particular time I was I was uh, I was relaxing and I get a call oh, and I. Uh, what, what, what do you need? <laughs> and he goes, Anna's lost the fuel pump. And I go, shit, I don't really want, like, I have a full tank of fuel. Yeah. I was like, I can't really pull that out right now, but I'll, I'll find a way. And he goes, I need you to go to the ghetto of Vegas. Because they have a 24 hour uh, auto zone. Yeah. And so I say ghetto. Uh, it is in the sketchier part of town. Right. Um, you went on. Yeah, it's fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am pro two way. Yes. Um, so we went, uh, I went, we, I went, uh, picked it up. Ultimately, we had agreed that I would go, uh, go there once I get it in hand and paid for um, he would start to drive okay. and he is probably 40 miles north of the 58 in SoCal on 395 so he has to drive all the way back down okay and then drive all the way over to the 15 and then uh, head up the 15 to wherever we are right um, it's probably about a three hour drive if you did it on yourself just to get there and get back okay. so I figured this point like, I got to make up for some lost time. Yeah. Uh, being that 3 a.m. friend, I mean, we already share each other's locations on our phone because if if anyone else has it, why doesn't your best friend? Right. And so I was looking at it, and I was doing the math, and I was like, we can probably meet at this intersection based on my speed. <laughs> and I was, I mean, I was, I had the cruise control set at 90, which is the most it would have let me do it. Okay. And that was to basically, if I let off the gas and coasted, I wouldn't go slower than 90. Yeah. Um, And I, 
I mean, I we'll, we'll, we'll add allegedly to there, just yeah. in case statute of limitations. Yeah, statute limitations come back. Probably, <laughs> sure. Uh, they can probably track it somehow. Probably, I don't know. Uh, but Super I, I mean, they, they, I was, I was driving excessive to try to get there. But again, yeah. it was night. I have very good lights because, much like our off-road lights here, yeah. I also put a set on the on the car <laughs> because it's really nice to have them. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't. I never try to speed past someone. Sketchy. I, like I don't need to win a race, right? Um, I like cruising fast. That's basically what I did. Well, that's, and on the, that's what I feel like everyone does out west. Like cruising yeah. fast is a thing out. Yeah, here. I mean, I grew up in SoCal, and if like double the speed limit was like going too slow. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, man, I'm gonna meet you at this spot, and I thought I was driving fast, and I believe Mike was in the trailer owner slash head mechanic guys. I think he was in a 12 valve Cummins. I'm going to call it a square body just so Mike hears it and gets frustration. It was definitely a second gen square body Dodge. Uh, sorry for the rest of the viewers. This is only for Mike. Square, square body is an inside joke. Square body. <laughs> every truck, in my opinion, is a square body simply because it's a sticking point. Yeah, I absolutely do know what a square body is. Uh, but this is free. I love you, Mike. Uh, so I was like, man, that truck, it, it's got a lot of miles on it. It's a highway truck. But he's probably going to top out at like 70, 75. Mike was doing like 85, 90 based on my calculations. And so we ended up having to meet an additional intersection closer. Okay. Or sorry, closer to myself than I had anticipated because I wasn't making up quite as much ground as he was. Yeah. He was blasting towards me in the middle of the night. Which is, didn't the guy tell him it shakes over 70? The guy was like, yeah, <laughs> for sure. He goes, it shakes over 70 and you know it. And this doesn't work. And this doesn't work. And this doesn't work. And you get inside and it's more of a command center than the than the FJ even. Right. Uh, based on everything he's got on it. But the guy's been doing it for years. I was just impressed that above 70, <laughs> he made it. So we kind of shook hands, gave each other a hug, handed off the parts, talked for a minute. And uh, I, I try to keep it brief. It's always hard with Mike. Uh, <laughs> It's hard with Mike and me, just like the podcast. Hey, you get talkers, you get going on stories, you want to hear about it. Yeah. I'm interested in, like, I'm invested emotionally and mentally in not only, like, Andrea's success yeah. uh, and her partner, um, Chris, but I'm emotionally invested in, like, Anna. Yeah. And, like, I want Anna to do really well. And at this point, I'm just glad we have parts. Yeah. Uh, and this, the secondary effect, I was like, oh, if I ever have to replace mine, I know how the fuel pump number. Exactly. Uh, so managed to hand it off and it really offer because I knew I had two and a half hours to get home, but he had probably six hours before he was going to get back and get to like a warm bed. Right. Yes. Yeah, by he, the time they got back, they had pulled the tank, drained it, gotten it all taken apart. There was junk everywhere inside there. Oh, no. And the fact that it hadn't died sooner is probably a miracle. That's fantastic. I love uh, that stuff from Rebel. Uh, yeah. Like, it, that's the, the, and it's the, field. it will continue on. Like, yeah. They will, they will succeed in some form. And I mean, much like this, it's a journey and a in a an adventure in that. Right. So, what's your favorite part about being out here on these expeditions? And I'm gonna get potent a little bit because that wind whiskey chicken. <laughs> it's keeping you warm right now. It is, and you can have some if you'd like. Uh, I'll be alright. So, my favorite part is really uh, scaring the shit out of people in like small <laughs> enough doses that they realize that they can do it. It's the same thing Schulte said, but in a different way. Yeah. yeah. And the hard <laughs> part is like today we were like, I was intentionally sending guys off camber. And it's because like you get used to it a little bit at a time. Yeah. And it's scary, but like dumb things done smartly, safe and good. Yeah. And so like I heard that, uh, shoot, I forget where, but I have tried to take that with influence my buddy's kids, Mike's kids, family, friends. And like in general, like doing dumb things smart, like there's nothing wrong. Right. Like, I don't want the FJ to flop right. and roll over, <laughs> but ultimately, like, we're going to go have a good time and share some of that. Yeah. And so I think if I had to give one thing, it's that. I mean, I do enjoy the adventure, the unknown. Um, a lot of these trips with what we get to do aren't necessarily for me. Um, it's trying to help provide that. And I think that's where we go above some of the other different guys where it's like you're just part of it. Um, like, I want to make sure that, like, whether you keep coming out and hanging out with us or not, or we get to wheel again in the future. Like you remember some of these things and you go on to that. And it's really entertaining to hear like years later, some of the stories come back on stuff yeah. that I've said, done and try to get people. And I didn't realize that we're like instrumental in helping them go along with it or mm -hmm. getting over that fear of only having five fingers on a hand when a dude with three fingers <laughs> rebuilds transmissions for a living, right? Like getting to do some of that is exciting and getting to pass that along is, I think is really what it's about. And then, I mean, this is like some of the beautiful parts of the country. Like, I don't know that I've done sand, desert, rocks, moon rocks, and yeah. snow 
in a weekend in a long time. In a weekend, we did like twenty four hours. Yeah, less like than was, let alone less than twenty four hours. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. So, what's one piece of advice? Uh, just do it. <laughs> Don't just do it. Yeah, I'm I'm full on board for. Don't hesitate. Just get out here. Show up and bring a notepad. And have you been looking at my notes? Stop no, cheating, man. No, you bring a notepad. <laughs> and the issue behind that is because you're going to be out here, you're going to have fun, you're going to hear something from someone, and you're going to be inspired. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. uh, if anything, it's, it's inspiring that part of it. You're writing the notes, you're taking some of it down, you're getting ideas, and you're going to do something. And shoot, I, everything's expensive. Yes. You got to start somewhere and you got to have goals and dreams. Otherwise, it's not fun. Right. And that's not saying that, um, you know, being able to have a, a super built already done rig means that you're going to do everything great. Like, honestly, I enjoy the breakdowns and all the crazy <laughs> things that occur. Like today was insane. Nick had an engine issue. Yeah. I mean, I'm just really bummed on like the most innocuous of stretches of road. It was just I 70. It was like, I 70. It, it wasn't just a trail. It was literally could else. have been driving to church. Yeah. Um, but we joke about that a lot and we're not driving to church. We pretend like we're our, uh, we are, we are beating the crap out of these vehicles. Yeah. But getting to go to a lot of that is entertaining. But for me, it started off with a notepad. Okay. And so just go. You don't have to have a fully built rig. It doesn't have to be done. <laughs> right. It. Keep an idea of like what the limitations are. Now, I wouldn't say bone stock lowered, uh, like S10 pickup. Right. Like that you got like uh, the little beds that come off and they dance or like you're, you're a street show car. Like that, that's not a great start. Right. But like. You know, show up with something, understand what the limitations are. I mean, in the years past, we've even done it where we've had um, like the crossover SUV type things and the and the Subarus and the the Outback stuff because it's it's more geared towards that. Like we've done a lot of the different trips with it. These are more uh, limited in how we kind of get to do some of this stuff. And it's more for a lot of where the trails are because a lot of that adventure consists outdoors. Donald's driving by behind me right now. Down the lunch. Oh, man. <laughs> You need to interview Donald. Oh, I don't know if he'll let me. <laughs> I don't even know what would come up on screen. I'm terrified. Sweet. That's all I had for you. You awesome. good? Sure. Uh, my name's Jared Davis. Um, I'm a native Las Vegas, Nevada. And um, I got a wife, daughter, and three dogs. Nice. And uh, I get to take my daughter and some of the dogs with us on our adventures. So, nice. That's fantastic. How do you get a uh, tag up the well, kind of, uh, kind of funny, but uh, my wife and Nick Savachi's and I, wife, yeah. and I, wife, um, they both worked together back in the day, so that's kind of how we got hooked up. Uh, and he's, we went with them. My daughter and I went with them on some of the they call them the Rogue Overland Kids yeah. uh, adventures, right? So that's how we started. Okay, um, and got involved with them, and and we've just stayed in touch ever since. So that was back in 2019. Nice. I got to pull my questions back up. Yeah. So what, what got you into off-roading in general? Um, well, being from Las Vegas, that is really the mecca of off-road racing Okay. Um, for the Southwest. Um, so I was brought up um, around like the Mint 400. Okay. Uh, my dad and his buddies, they built engines and stuff for race cars and um, helped hit them and stuff like that. So that's how I spent my weekends was wrenching in my, you know, watching my dad and his friends wrench on race cars, motors, whatever. Uh, that's how I got started in kind of the off-roading stuff as a kid. Um, that just transitioned into, you know, hunting with my dad a couple of times as a kid. He had a Jeep, so we would go out and explore and stuff with that. So that's kind of how I got introduced into it. Uh, didn't really get back into it until I was a little bit older in life. Uh, bought a Jeep and been doing it now for pretty solid for about 13 14 years okay again, so uh how many of these uh rogue overland expeditions have you been on this is the very first one okay um so normally um uh, me and my buddies we all hang out we got jeeps we have a called no name jeep club okay. sorry we so, talked about this. yeah <laughs> it's kind of a it's kind of a play on jeep guys always asking you hey what club are you part of and we're never part of a club but we just said hey let's let's do this. So <laughs> I'm kind of like the trail gunner for that and, um, set up routes and adventures like this for us. It's a small group, six to eight, sometimes 10 guys. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I do plan the plan, the menu, the routes, um, figure out where we're going and all that stuff. So I do the logistical side of it. Very small. Okay. Um, this year it blew up and Nick hit me up and he said, Hey, would you be interested in, in guiding, you know, being 
guiding one of the squadrons for us. I said, yeah, sure. Yeah. So it's pretty cool to get to learn um, from Nick and the other guys, the logistics of a big group. Right. right. And uh, it's been going great with, you know, my buddies, like my one friend, he only goes out by himself. So okay. for him to go by himself and transition into a group of 40 vehicles, pretty crazy. He's having a blast. Is he? So, yeah. yeah Who's, really is that Max here? That's, uh, that is Willie, the okay. lone overlander. That's yes. his, that's his uh, Instagram tag. So turns out, yeah. turns out Willie uh, listens to the podcast. Yeah, quite yes, a bit. He, yeah. Does. <laughs> he does. He does. He does. He, uh, he does. He has a couple of his own little pages and stuff. So, he does. Yeah. He sent me some. We're yep. gonna, we're, I was like, he and I are going to talk more. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, what are you driving on this trip? So I have, uh, this is my second Jeep. I have a 2015 um, Unlimited JK Rubicon, um, but it's an AEV edition. So right. it was built by um, American uh, American Expedition Vehicles. Okay. Um, I like to joke that it's built and bought because I've, you know, obviously done some <laughs> yeah. stuff to it myself. Look, but um, You guys who modify their rig? Well, yeah. this is so new. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that never happens, right? But um, we've been everywhere in it from Wyoming, Colorado, you know, all over the Southwest, of course. Right. And and uh, we also have a little trailer um, from Carp Expedition Trailers. Pretty simple okay. trailer that um, has a rooftop tent on it, just storage and stuff. And, and when I have my daughter with me, we bring the trailer because that's a little bit more comfortable for her too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. That's what makes sense. Once you oh, start yeah. adding kids to the scenario, yeah. you're like, we got to get more space. Yeah, I got to like... tell you, man, she's hardcore. <laughs> she hangs in there. That's awesome. Uh, what are your favorite part? Of... Actually, because it's this year what's been your favorite part so far um i you know what i really like it like today we stopped and we saw the um the missiles testing stuff. yeah so that's the kind of quirky stuff that i like to throw into okay. our adventures um i have a family tie to mining way back in the day so and nevada is a huge mecca for mining for silver mining and stuff like that right. so that's kind of what i do is i like to find those ghost towns and stuff like that and go visit those things and then the really cool thing I think about it is we see this country in no other way than anybody else yeah. does because there's the fast all the highways, right? right yeah. And we're getting out and just seeing some parts of the country that nobody's ever going to really see. It, it's, it's insane. Do we saw so many different environments yeah, in like 24 hours. We did. I mean, we're in snow and then, and you, you were know, deep in that. Snow. Yeah. Yeah. I got a little, I got a little high centered in some snow, you know, trying to bust through, but Hey, things like that happen. And, uh, but yeah, we go from snow and then, you know, 30 minutes later, we're down rock crawling on the stone. So yeah. it's been really cool. The surface of the moon today. Yep. Like, it was yep. weird. Uh, what's one thing if somebody was contemplating coming out on uh, the expedition that you would want them to know? Like when it could be vehicle setup, advice, driving advice. Don't be intimidated. Just do it. Yeah. Um, it's it's it, seriously, it's like a family once you get out here. I have it loved is. the vibe. Yeah. Everybody's so accepting. Uh, it's just really cool. It's very intimidating. Um, to come out with a group of 40 people, right? But yeah. everybody's been super cool. We're all getting along. It's awesome. And I mean, like, everybody's in different vehicles. Like, yep. we've, we've got the power wagon sitting here behind yeah. us. But, like, yeah. you're in a Jeep. Yep. They're an ex-Terra guy. Yep. Sean's in an FJ. Yep. I brought my wife, Sequoia. Yep. yep. And then there's a fr at least a Frontier, a couple of tacos. Like, yeah. it's everything. Yeah, that's kind of cool. We got the Isuzu, the yeah, big cross the in there. Cross. You know, it looks like a little micro machine. That thing's awesome. <laughs> it's going all over the place. We got... We have a picture of it somewhere, all four wheels in the air um, on uh, the Wild legend? Rim Trail. Yep, oh, on the man. ledges. Yep. All four oh, tires are in the air. I knew I saw that front one pop. I didn't see yeah, the Yeah, no, all though. four all in the air, and somebody's got a picture of it. It's floating around camp somewhere. It's Dude, those cool. wheels are so tall. It looks like they're like trains. <laughs> <laughs> they ginormous, right? Right, yeah. I saw a picture of it. I was like, what's he rolling? 40s or 35s? They're so. exact same as yours. Yep, yep. Sweet. Thanks, man. That's all I have. Yeah. Can I drop the plug? Oh, no, definitely. Okay. Plug that. So another, the most important thing that I'm doing on this trip is um, I'm spreading awareness for uh, an organization that I volunteer with that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I have some really good friends that uh, founded the organization. It's mm -hmm. called Race to Race 22. And like myself, they grew up in Las Vegas in the off-road industry. Um, some Bill, who's the husband of Debbie, they, they run the organization. Bill actually raced three wheelers back in the day oh my gosh in off-road races so that's <laughs> how far back they go it's kind of crazy but um so what how they started out is they wanted to bring awareness to the suicide epidemic in the veteran community and knock that stigma out yeah and uh give them resources okay. um veterans that are struggling give them resources active duty that's struggling 
um, resources so they can um, get the help they need um, to, sorry, it's okay. hard to talk about it sometimes, but to conquer those struggles they have. Yeah. So, um, like I said, we're neighbors. I kind of got involved with them. Um, they invited me out to a race. I saw firsthand the good that it did. Um, a vet, we got a vet out of a truck that was in the Mint 400 racing, and he was smoking all man. He had a blast. So after that, I started volunteering with them. Um, and then, you know, I had my Jeep and, and all my Jeep and buddies, and I said, hey, guys, what do you think about bringing vets on the Jeeps with us? So yeah. we started doing that about five years ago with them. Okay. Um, another thing that we do, and that's what we're doing to, that's what we're doing on this trip is we ask, um, we ask people like you who are yeah. here on the trip with us to carry a picture of a fallen warrior that has taken their own life because of their struggles with PTSD and other things. Um, and then we post that picture on social media tag uh debbie tags the family i should say debbie does that she tags the family um and then the family sees it and then they know that their their son daughter husband wife whatever yeah. um is not forgotten so um and that their struggles are not forgotten and that we, we appreciate um their service to our country so we're also um debbie has also started digging into the law enforcement community mm -hmm. and first responders because they have the same stigma there it's actually um, probably harder to break into than the veteran community is. Um, so uh, we're making great strides there. They help people out all over the country. It's not just in Las Vegas, um, yeah. but they help people get the resources they need. And there's so much good that they do. Um, it's been awesome. No, I love and it. everybody in the off-road community, overlanding community, they're so accepting of it. And I mean, I had people come up giving me hugs saying, what can we do to help? You know, yeah. it's been awesome. It's been Dude, I, have, I have two firefighter EMTs there in my yep. family. I love more than anything yep. in the world. I absolutely am on board with that. Yep. Yeah, it's awesome. We appreciate this sport. Yeah. So that's my most important um, thing that I'm doing on this trip. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Man. Thank you very it. much. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, yeah. So, hey, everybody. I'm Nick with Rogue Overland. And um, don't you have to clarify which Nick? It's important. I do need to <laughs> clarify. Yes. So I am Nick Savachi with Rogue Overland. Uh, and yeah, just gosh, excited to be here. Thanks for having me on yeah. the show. Uh, been been wheeling for a long time since I was little. Started in an S10 Blazer, and uh, now now wheeling in the Nissan community for like the last I don't even know twenty years or fifteen years. Right. Um. It just, God, just love being out here. Dude, I wrote down the note to ask you, how's the x -Terra? But after today, I don't really, oh, I don't want to. Man, like, I no, literally no, don't want to. Oh, you know what? It's, this is, I think this is an opportunity. We always do these posts on on the the Rogue Overland, uh, the story posts yeah. on the Instagram. And uh, where I start it with, you know, it's, this is an Instagram, this is a Instagram isn't real post. And I think <laughs> that, um, I think it's a good opportunity. Let's yeah, look at this. Life is real. <laughs> it's real. It's real. Um, we had real moments today. We had yeah. real moments today. So uh, I, I turn all the wrenches on my rigs. I do my best to prep rigs and make sure yeah. they're ready to go. Uh, my Xterra, solid axle swap Nissan Xterra. Uh, you can watch a video of it yeah. on our YouTube channel. Uh, she's named Onconius and uh, 236,000 miles. And today she went dead on me on the, oh. on the interstate. Well, that's we talked about. It was Sean, you're like, you just were driving to church, man. Like, you weren't doing anything yeah. wild with it. It was like the most, yeah, of like the stuff we've been through in the last three days. That was chill, right? And and uh, Mike and I were talking about uh, Red Leader, we were talking about how we're thanking her for that yeah. because she didn't fail in the middle of seven mile rim. Exactly, and we had to get her off. She failed right on the side of the interstate, just past an exit, <laughs> easy to easy to recover. Um, but you know what it comes down to is you can always plan, yeah. right? You can you can plan for everything. You can prep your rigs, and sometimes sometimes things happen. It's not Instagram. It's not the pretty pictures all the time. Sometimes it's raw, and in this case, uh, we've we've diagnosed that we're pretty pretty sure there's something internal wrong with the in, with the motor. So yeah. it's either going to be head work or a timing belt or maybe even a full engine rebuild at this point. And uh, that's just how it goes. Sometimes you have to roll with the punches. That's she'll be back. It's yeah. Oh, a, she'll be back. An she will be fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna. Yeah, so uh, not going anywhere. So the last time we had you on the show, I think you dropped that you were getting an NV van. Yes. How's the van? 
the van is going well. Yeah, the van is going well. Actually, uh, I don't even think we recorded that. I think you told after we stopped recording, you were like, "Yeah, I'm getting a van with a top top." Oh, uh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a 2020, okay. and the idea on Conius is is very capable, right? I mean, yeah. And and we've done the whole, we do the whole family in, inner, and uh, you know, we've done Colorado and Rubicon Trail and all these things. She's not built for for. You know, on, on highway speeds, I mean, 75, she's working hard. Right. Okay. So what we said was, uh, and COVID kind of prompted us for this, was um, if we're going to do an extended amount of time in a vehicle, there's five of us with our kids. Yep. Okay. And I, you know, I know that you have family <laughs> and we talk, we've talked about this uh, off camera and um, there's five of us. And in, in the exterior, it's like, you know. Yeah, they're on it. top of each yeah, other back you there. you can bring one thing and that's it, you know. So, um, Stop touching your siblings. Yeah, to yeah the... they're touching me. Right? <laughs> so so we got the NV van. We we converted it to four-wheel drive. Okay. Uh, we got with NizTech lifts and uh, an Icon. And so there's an Icon suspension in it. And there's an ARB locker in the front differential. Really? So it's locked in the front. Um, some issues, we really weren't able to just convert a Titan piece over okay. to lock the back. So it's just locked up front, but it has four low, a true transfer case. Nice. And uh, yeah, Colorado camper vans, pop top. We got with goose gear and there's a goose gear drawer system in the back. Okay. Yeah. And, and I kind of... It's good enough right there. I really still want to do some onboard water and uh and and a better battery system in the okay. back, but um you know life is crazy and yeah. it, and it's and it runs good enough there. So the idea is that uh oh and we we got with Dragonfly tarps uh and there's a uh the awning their tarp system on the outside. Awesome. We'll be releasing a review video of that. We've been using it for a couple of years now. Okay. That'll be coming out soon, but um yeah, so it's just it, it's it's capable for a van, yeah. right? But we're not rock crawling it. Yeah. it. It can tow dirt bikes. It can it can take us somewhere to go mount, mountain biking. Uh, it, it took us on the Mojave Road. We all went on the Mojave Road and we took it through that. And yeah. we can all live in it comfortably for an extended amount of time. And oh my gosh, the V8 power coming from the 3.3 <laughs> liter, you know, V6. I didn't complain at all the last three years. It's like, yeah, right. It's like, what is this? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it it's it's been a great build for us. There's still more to come with it. Okay. But uh, but yeah, it just it's it's a great family adventure mobile. No, I love it. How many so we're out here on the road to overland expedition? Yep. How many years have we been running expeditions now? Well, since 2016. Yeah, since 2016. So is this number seven? That's uh what is that? Four, five, six. Okay. Yeah, this, so this is the seventh year. Okay. Yeah, because 20, yeah, right. Yep. I had to do math on the fly there. You know I'm not good. Right, right. yeah. The numbers guy. And and is this the most rigs you've ever had on one? This is. This is the most rigs. Yeah. How, how much <laughs> when when do you start planning one of these? Like is it as soon as the last one is done, we're already on to we're the already one? yeah, we're already on. We actually had a meeting with the uh so we're all Star Wars geeks yeah. and uh so we, we call it the squadron leaders, right. right? Green leader, red leader, gold leader, right? So red's the so best, but yeah, red, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh um I'm I'm Rogue One, they're, they, I yep. somehow got labeled Rogue One, and then our our tail gunners, who amazing group of guys, <laughs> um, they're Slave One, right off a uh, uh, Boba Fett's yep. um, um, ship. So, so we all go off of these, and so anyway, so so the squadron leaders, so we all had a meeting, even even leading up to this, to talk about this event this was a, a couple of days prior to it, just to finalize some things, yeah. and even then we already started to say, okay, hey. Let's get some ideas for next year. So pretty much as soon as this one drops, uh, we, we already are at least loosely making plans for the next one. Because when you start talking about permitting, yeah, you talk about the logistics, you can't take 40 rigs and say, we're going to wing camp, oh, right? God, no. We'll figure it out on the fly. Yeah, You can't figure anything out on the fly with, with 40 rigs. So yes, as soon as this ends, we're pretty much flat into let's get next year going. That's so great. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I knew it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. It, it it is. It is. It's it's a it's passionate for all of us. We love it and we truly enjoy it, but but it is the logistics are a lot of work. So how and I, I Sean kind of alluded to this, like how have you attracted so many chill participants? Like 
and it might be just be trickle down from the top because all of the leaders are very calm. Like no one's losing their mind. I mean, Sean's Sean, but everybody else is very calm. Yeah. Um. And seriously, the group of people have been amazing. Like Ross asked me the other day, he was like, "What's the vibe?" And I go, "It's amazing. It's fantastic. It's a, it's like a tight knit family that they'll take anybody in." Yeah, we we've we've always said. Um, I mean, here's the thing: we're gonna we're gonna poke some fun. And and you, well, yeah, you've heard it, right. You've yeah. heard it, right. You know, there's a uh, bunch of dudes around. Right, like, it's gonna it's, happen. You're right. So yeah. you know, we're poking fun at Jeeps and we're poking fun at at, at uh, Toyotas, and then the Nissan brakes. So of course <laughs> now we're talking about parting out <laughs> Nissan rigs. Um, but I I think it I think it comes because we're all here because this is what we love to do, and we we all come from the off road. OK, and and you and I talked a little about this before and and in every group in this industry, they have their backgrounds. Some are from film, some are from, you know, whatever yeah. we're we're we've been wheeling since before. You know, you just you just called it wheeling and called it camping. And so it's very passionate for us. And I can't say for certain why, but I, I think, yeah, maybe it's just because, the you know, we're passionate about being here. We're passionate about helping people get better. We love seeing somebody come in on day one and going to, you know, through an obstacle, like, Oh, I mean, we were on white up, white out hill, right? Seven mile rip. And this is the first time this ever happened. So I'm going to wipe out hill and, and I'm going to spot this next tear down. And so I, you know, I give him the signal for start rolling forward. Right. And then his hand comes out the window and he signals me to come this way. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, that's, that's never happened, that's but different. let's go talk about yeah. it. And so I go up and he says, Hey, you know, I'm really uncomfortable about going down this obstacle because I'm 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 a manual. Yeah. And so him and I talked about some strategies with the manual transmissions and and Sean has a manual, so I'm very familiar with dealing with manuals. And uh, you know, we walked through and he got down it and we and all got we, down. We there all is got no down. bypass. Right. right. There's no bypass. And so the the pride that that gives people and, and 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 then now you go to the next obstacle that's infinitely easier than swipe out hill yeah. and maybe he wouldn't have tried that and now he drives over it without even thinking Dude, twice he took the hard line today yeah I, we saw him all take the hard line. right I, I took the easy line but still like i i'm not in the rig capable for that yet. yeah yeah yet. yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. there you go next time sorry baby uh, <laughs> she doesn't want We're fine. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, but yeah i i think it's just it's just amazing to see people progress over over the days, and, and you know, I don't know. I guess maybe that's why, because then now he's going to go to his buddy, and, and nobody's going to invite. Um, you know, uh, I've got a hole going in my head, but right. I, I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say. So I was just say whatever you want. Okay, we, so you, we're not going to invite the asshole, yeah. right? Because now he feels connected. So I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Is is he if he he's going to be careful about who he brings into the fold because it's like he he had he progressed his skills and had a great experience. So he doesn't want to bring somebody maybe that 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 isn't going to contribute to that. Right. I I do have a, a buddy that was like, "There's no Land Rovers." <laughs> Sign up, like it. Jane, right? Like, we, get out here. We buddy. want him here. Yeah. He's a chill guy. Yeah, I think you like go quite a bit. I love so. it. Um, I gotta remember what my other questions were. Get a little chilly. Dude is absolutely, and we're losing light too. Lauren's been having his truck in the background the entire time. <laughs> um, how, how do you guys straddle the line of fun and safety? Because at no point have I felt unsafe, yeah. and I've had a blast. Uh, and those lines don't always cross like that. No, I'm I'm gonna attribute that to um my two things. One. Lots of military in our group. That's true. Okay, lots of military in our it's group. It's been the best radio call I've ever heard. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my business partner, Nick, Nick Schulte, active Air Force. Right. Um, my dad comes from a blue collar background. He's an HVAC. And he always he always raised me in a way where, and I've been around turning wrenches and fixing things since yeah. I could, you know, could probably didn't even know what a wrench was called. And he always told me that, you know, accidents don't happen like your your observation of the of the situation right that's what leads to accidents right yeah. you not observing the situation and say these are the things that can happen what's my contingency plan it's like turning a wrench if you're turning a wrench and the alternator is right here you don't turn it with a fist around the wrench because if it breaks free yeah. you punch the alternator yeah, exactly. you know you turn it with, Push with, it. Yeah. with pushing it so i think it's a combination of 
of Hicks military background and some of the other guys and, and their um, Department of Defense background. And then uh, just me kind of with that grassroots raising and blue collar, if you will. And so, yes, we we want everybody to have a great time, but we want everybody to to leave with their rigs intact. Yeah. Okay. Within reason. I yeah. mean, there's, you know, desert pinstriping. Sometimes yeah, you can't I've avoid got a scuff it. mark, but yeah. I earned that scuff you mark. Like, it. Right. I, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and we do our best and and we want we want everybody to leave with all their limbs and to have had a great time. And they have a great time if something um, you know, a catastrophic accident happens. And right. so we try to prioritize that safety so that people can have a blast. I I love I've I've as soon as I showed up, I've loved everything about the group that's been out here. Like I am the, so happy you came the, out. The I first morning, I was like, I'm not sure. <laughs> and by literally like 30 minutes into the day, I was like, no, this is great. This is exactly what I wanted it to be. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I got to think of my other questions. It's those day one vibes, you know? I mean, right. It's like anytime you go anywhere, you know, you go to summer camp or you go to whatever. Anytime you're the first little bit, you're trying to feel it out and see what it's going to be like. What's your favorite part of these expeditions? Oh, my you, 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 your hands in everything out here. Like yeah. you're part of everything. So. Yes. Uh, what is my favorite part? My favorite part. Um, I, 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 I want to comment for the people listening and, and, you know, hopefully everybody here is going to listen and really well, he already uh, told me he listens. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> good, good. Uh, and, and, uh, I'm a type A personality. So, yes. so I realized that, uh, I had somebody give me feedback once and, and afterwards, and, and it was along the lines of, um, um, that I, I, I seem really uptight and like stressed. And so one, I want to say is that's just my personality type. And that's why I said in the driver's meeting, the day one is like, if I look stressed out or if I'm hollering about something, um, I'm loving every minute of it. I'm right. loving every minute of it. So I think what I, I'm going to, I'm going to take two favorite parts. <laughs> you my absolutely two, can. My two favorite parts are one, the crew taking a group like this and making things happen in the order they're supposed to happen yep. and getting to the end on time, because it hasn't always been like that. We learned a lot the first time we did this, which like I talked about was only with um, 12 rakes. Right. The last day we were so far behind schedule, we had to cut a bunch of stuff okay. and we learned a ton. And so one I think is, is the crew and in our ability to, to make this massive group happen on time. Yeah. And then secondly is kind of following back to what we talked about before is just, I love seeing the progression of people. I love people saying, I would have never done that. And now they're going to leave. Actually, Chase was just telling me, he goes, I took my group on the trip that we did in 2019 to we we were out around Valley of uh, Valley of the Gods. Uh -huh. And he's like, he was a newbie when he went out with us on that trip. And then he took his group of guys yeah, out awesome. there and he led them. And so I think seeing people's progression, I love it. It's it's amazing to see people get better to make themselves better. Dude, it's so fantastic. Yeah. I, 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 seriously, it's it's. I'm in awe of the amount of planning that had to go into this oh, yeah. and the energy level that you have maintained. Cause there has to be, there has to be one guy getting everything done. There ha that's just going to be the case. Yep. And you've done it very well. Yeah. And Thank you haven't, you, you haven't Thank made you. us get up crazy ass early. Like <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it happens, but you know, what? I don't know how it happened that we don't have any eight o'clock rolls. No, they're all yeah. very, very yeah. reasonable roll time. Yeah. And, and I, I appreciate that. And I will say that I do at the very end, I crash. Like I yeah. maintain this level and most of the time the crew travels to day one and back home together. And okay. then we drop off because yeah. we're spread out between Southern Utah and Southern California. And usually we'll, we'll, we'll caravan home together. And although I've sort of been leading this whole crazy mess, when when the trip is over and we go home, I I dump and I fall. I I take tail. <laughs> I sure. take tail home and I yeah. follow everybody else. So yeah. I'm not superhuman, um, but I, I I don't know. I love being out here, so I ride the wave right up to the end, and then and then when everything's done. I dump and I literally am kind of brain dead and I just follow the rest of the guys take me home. Yeah. I yeah. absolutely understand that point. Oh, like, yeah. You've used all of the energy. You're like, I literally right. need someone else to do it now. Yep. I, the battery's gone. 
Yeah. Well, sweet. Um, the last thing I had is if someone is contemplating coming, mm-hmm. what's that one piece of advice you want them to think about? No, what advice, driving advice, life advice? Oh. See, it's the heavy question. This, this is this is heavy. This is late in the day for heavy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it down already. Like, um, I I think it's I think it's that uh, your attitude is everything. Mm-hmm. Your attitude is everything. It's so hard because, and even me, I'm I'm in it. I'm posting social media. I'm making videos. Yeah. I I am. We're making content for companies. I mean, you're going to see some of our photos in in uh, 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 Overland Journal, like over the next year. Yeah, I think that was a cow. cow. I think that was a cow, yeah. Uh, I drove a long uh, way to get cow. Come on. (laughs) What kind of trip is this? Um, You're going to see our photos in Overland Journal with with Bubba Ropes ads for the next year, right? And that stuff is like, I mean, you know, I don't know when I see other guys like Expedition Overland and I and I see their stuff with with um um 511 Tactical, I even say gosh, like that is so cool. Like how did they, you know, and and I and I see other people post videos and sometimes I find myself saying gosh, that looks so amazing. But I know because I'm here. I right. know that 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 perception is not real. It doesn't look like that all the time. Right. Okay. So I think that my, my piece of advice is that, is that just get out there and get out there with a positive attitude, because if you maintain that positive attitude, you're going to have a fantastic experience regardless of, of whatever gets thrown at you. So I'm going to compliment you because literally almost every guy that you've had over here talking to me, that's their piece of advice. Yeah. Well, it's today. literally like as a, as a team, you have the synergy achieved. I right? did not plan that. No, you didn't. It was okay. fantastic. And that's probably how you collect all of these people who continue to come back to the rallies because that's the thing that everyone's focused on. Right. Yeah. It's I fantastic. mean, gosh, that's that, you know, I don't try not to get too emotional, but that's cool <laughs> that they all said that because, yeah, we, we did not plan that. Yeah. It's fantastic. I love it so much. Plan that. Sweet. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. No, thanks for having me. Thank, I really, I'm so thank glad you for you're out here. me. <laughs> so glad you're out here. All right. The glory is our video's awful and that won't matter because yeah. it's all about the. Oh.